Hello everybody, welcome to this amazing game of Dead by Daylight. Today is the Peeps by Daylight tournament. If you missed it live, we'll be posting all the top 8 games here on YouTube, no problem, just like you're about to see here. This is the first game that we had, but as you can see on the bracket, the topmost team did not finish in round 2. Uh, and when moving to round three, which was the beginning of top eight, um, we needed to give them a little more time. So we just jumped ahead, did a different bracket while the first team continued to wrap it up. So this first game is Chocolate Milk Gamers versus Space Force Zero. And then the next video will go back to the top team and then we'll continue the rest of the tournament as normal. So without further ado, please enjoy this game with Chocolate Milk Gamers versus Space Force Zero. Hello everybody, welcome to this amazing game of Dead by Daylight, Peeps by Daylight Tournament. We're starting our game anti-rads, running Nurse, Strobe as Lori, Chode Lord as Nia, Adelwyn as Jake, and Yielding Business as Claudette. Claudette takes the first hit of the game. We're playing on the map Coal Tower. All survivors were not allowed to wear prestige clothing, it seems like we're getting a bit of lag here. Nurse, absolutely not lagging. This is a kind of redo on the game map. Ooh, healing business. Lagging pretty hard, but Nurse, recovering very well. Troop working on that generator upstairs. Working through that ruin, getting those great skill checks. Showed Lord. Hiding behind, Nia going for the save. Little bit of lag. It's all right, latency is a thing. We'll have to look into this later. Hook rescue, 15,000 points. Jake hiding around the corner. Running with leadership. Claudette injured. Hiding at that far back corner, trying to avoid that nurse's calling. Barbecue and chili. Not keeping the points for the tournament, but actually doing some relative good justice on tracking where people are at. Focusing on defending her totem and finding people on the generator upstairs. Still damaged. Or not damaged at all. Sparks were uh, not really there. I must have been hallucinating. Defending that totem with her life. It's up to the survivors to really work through the Hex Ruin. If they can do that, the nurse might fall out of... I don't know what would you call it. Fall out of uh, her gameplay, her style in which she has chosen to defend the totem and that center generator inside the cult tower itself. Jake, back upstairs, working on that generator. She does, he does not want to let that go. Found a flashlight within a chest. Nurse, checking around. Found another generator being worked on. Nurse, locked on to the Claudette. Claudette, running out. No sprint burst available due to exhaustion. Taking the first hit right next to the basement. If she goes down here, all trouble is about to fall upon Claudette. Nurse failed the second blink to follow the Claudette. Claudette running her darkest clothing in order to blend into her natural surrounding. Still getting that bit of lag. Nia taking the hit for Plora Claudette. Nurse swapping targets to the Nia. Going through the pallet. Missing on the return. Oh no. Nurse is gonna have to come back from this. Nia running out of sight. Scratch marks all over the place. And her hex totem is gone. Unfortunately, she's relying on three perks now. Nia, healing too close to the nurse, got caught by nurse's calling. Showed Lord running for her life. Having to struggle here to get the vision to not be dark due to nurse mechanics. Thank you, nurse mechanics. You make KYF the best. Nia, running to the other side. Nurse didn't see it. Misses her just barely as Nia runs for her life. I don't know what she's going to do. Going through the window, doctors around the window, pretends, fakes it out, and she's out of there. Ladies and gentlemen, two generators down, three to go. Nia, with the 360 plays, I always say they're a myth, but on a nurse, well, hey, anything's possible. Lori taking it to the face, exchanging a hit, 1,000 points to go down, but is that worth her life? Let's find out. Lori, floating on an invisible nurse. Nurse invisibly leaves. Fantastic. This game's perfect. Uh. 
Chode Lord on the run. Adeline running out to his generator. Yielding business, hiding and grazing in the wild fields that are the coal tower. Look, as Claudette gracefully returns to her generator, only to continue repairs. Unseen. Jake, on the other hand, running away from the nurse. Again, another wonderful spin around. Fantastic. Scratch marks out of control, cause killers are balanced. Quite clearly. Nurse struggling to keep it together. Checking on the other generator. Nothing available. Lori working on another dull totem, attempting to prevent that know it. Great skill checks through. Repairs completed. One generator left. If they didn't get all five of the totems, Noed will activate and Nurse will become more lethal than any of us could ever imagine. Until the hex totem is destroyed in the first 15 seconds of its spawning. Claudette hanging out. Nurse jumping generator to generator. Of course, Vision's a son of a bitch. Jake getting caught out right behind the rock. Running from the nurse. Kiting her around the objects. Objects. I was going to say objectives, but, you know, objects is fine. Nurse returning to the generator. Slams the pallet down out of fear the nurse was going right for him. Staying low with that urban evasion. around for her prey. Nurse has one last chance. No one escapes death. Not active. They got all five of the totems. Bought them enough time. She has to patrol between doors. Who will she tag? Lori going for additional objective points through the chests. We have Claudette and Nia at one end of the door. Jake still trying to heal. Jake's urban evasion is catching on. He's getting away. He was getting away. Nurse caught on. Hits the poor Jake. Jake is down. Does the three survivors make an altruistic play to get him out of there and score their 10,000 point bonus? Or do they leave him behind? Choices have to be made. Nurse is not nearly as threatening without her no head. But she is still a massive threat. Nurse. Faking out her own blink. Uh, three other survivors looking out, all at different angles. Nurse defending her location. Adelwine giving the I'm getting camped pull ups. Lori patiently waiting her turn. They could go for the save. All three of them closing in at once. This is going to be the most altruistic play we see. Here it goes. Jake getting safe. Nurse returns. Borrowed time takes effect. Sprint burst goes out. Lori took the hit. Is she swapping over to Lori? Claudette begins to body block. Nurse goes right through. Blinks. Takes him. Borrowed time takes effect. He's almost at the door. If the nurse does not secure this next blink, he is out and they all get out. He goes back into the house. Dodges the nurse. Nurse lost her prey with everyone else circling her about. She's claiming as many points as possible while other survivors get altruistic points of distraction. Two people survived. Jake and Lori still remind. Jake's bleed out time running low. Nurse disappeared into the ground. Lori fully healed looking for her targets. Broad time's running out. Nurse's calling is taking effect. And he fell down. She didn't get the additional hit. He didn't get the additional. He didn't get the additional stun points. Oh my god. Lord have mercy, he snuck those thousand points in there at the last second. Lori, understanding that her time is done here, she must leave. Unless 
She wants to claim another 1,500 points. She she booked it. She bailed. Her ally is not going to get the struggle points. This game is over. Lori, just running underground there. <laughs> Enjoying her sweet time. Nurse taking her one kill and walking away. Second game for the Chocolate Milk Gamer Space Force. We got Hillbilly leading the way, yielding business, taking control of his coal tower. He seems to have bumped into a cloud. He sees Meg on the right. He ends his chainsaw. Meg caught in the open. Gonna have to use a pallet early to save herself. This is getting intense. We have anti reds as Lori, Tomb Pillager as Claudette, Ghostly as Nia, and Meg being chased by Hillbilly, named I'm the Leather Billy. Uh oh, here comes point blank chainsaw to the back of her head. Doesn't dodge it, takes it right to the face. Unfortunately, 360s did not help you here. An immediate hook, unfortunately, for her face hole. Hillbilly finding a proper place to place his victim. Not even running Hex Ruin. Doesn't even want to waste his time with that nonsense. How interesting. Hillbilly is just gonna rely on brute force, agitation for quick placements on hooks, enduring for quick recovery under pallets. Nurse is calling to make sure they do not hide when he hurts them. Jumped out the building without the scratch marks revealing the way. Found the Claudette anyways as she's trying to just sneak her way around. Stops the lorry on the generator. Lorry sprint bursting away right out of the window. Doesn't take it. Oh! Gets her around the corner! Hot damn! Out of nowhere. Did not see that coming. Holy shit. This is unexpected gameplay from a hillbilly, no add-ons. They are not handling his nonsense tonight. Great skill checks come from the Tomb Pillar. Ghostly working on a second generator. No generators completed. Two people on hooks already. We have no idea how this is going to end. Now we have I'm Leather Billy working on those totems for those boldness points. Now, they could be prepping for Noed, they could be attempting to prevent some other Hex Totem, I suppose. But for now, it seems that Hillbilly is going on a drive. And as he scouts around, let's see if he finds anybody. Lori's still on a hook, nobody going to make the rescue. Tomb Pillager still working on a generator. Ghostly still working on a generator. And I'm Leatherbilly hiding behind. Gets caught at the last second, makes too early of a move. Doesn't get around the tree. Down again from the chainsaw, one of the most powerful tools in the game. Nothing's going to stop him. That being said, I'm Leatherbilly, going to a nearby hook. Hillbilly, carrying his prey all the way to the basement agitation. Not giving a damn. 90% of the way there. And hooked. Basement hooks, dangerous. They got anti-reds off the hook. Lori working on another generator. Claudette on generator up in the cold tower. Nia running around, hopefully looking for her next generator. One generator completed, four to go, one in the basement. Hillbilly owning his game, dominating his realm. Hillbilly noticing some nonsense around here. Does he see the Nia? Seems like he caught up to her location. Getting that point blank chase already. Doesn't go to the pallet. Dodges with a quick left right maneuver. He's got those sidesteps, kids. Doesn't risk the pallet, does the hillbilly go for the base. Goes for the direct hit, drops the pallet. Now there's no pallet to the left side of Nia. She's gonna have to run a further distance. A mace could end her immediately. There's no pallet in range. She's got a locker. She could probably juke in and save herself a little bit of time. Just taking the killer for a nice long walk on the beach. And down on the ground she goes. Leather Billy sacrificed in the basement. Nobody going to save. Ghostly being picked up. Anti Red still injured, healing herself. And Claudette. Just working on that generator all by her lonesome. Third person hooked. Here's some vision of the under level. Lori going for the save, trying to make up for whatever she can. Hillbilly dominating the realm. Scratch marks. Uh oh. Seems like our little friend has been caught. Oh, yielding was being very generous to that pallet. Respecting its existence. Uh-oh. Claudette caught going around the corner. Claudette zigzagging left and right. I'm not sure she's going to make it. Nurse is calling proc for just a second. Got caught behind the tree. Uh-oh. Nia, that's not going to do you any good. And down you go. Welcome 
the grindhouse. Anti-Reg trying to get a generator done with two more to go. It does not seem that this team is going to hold themselves together. They are falling apart one by one, but only two generators needed. Ghostly back on the hook. Barbecue and Billy chainsawing that pallet. And Lori cut out on her own point blank chainsaw down a narrow hallway. Ooh. Gets away just barely. Lori juked around the entire rock. I saw a small glimpse of her getting away. And those scratch marks leading out and around. Lori stuck all the way making the save. Uh-oh. But Hillbilly coming around for those point blank chainsaws. Goes with Lori. Lori left, left steps right into the wall. Oh, and T-Bag's the killer. Oh, this is not a good day for you, Lori. Welcome to the grind house. And Lori unable to use that unbreakable. Unfortunately, your teabagging ways are over. They're gone today, Lori. Say hello to the entity. Half health. They're going to have to pound these out. Nia injured. I think Claudette was attempting to be a little overall altruistic. Sprint is taking effect now. As she runs around, seeing that Hillbilly's barbecue and chili has taken effect. Claudette going for the final rescue. Nia gets the generator completed. But Hillbilly's not having any of her business. And down. Ghostly goes. Down towards the basement. Or will he use the outer hook? Who knows? He does have agitation. It does not matter. Anti-Red's getting that heal in. Before they go out, they got one more generator to go. Securing this next kill has guaranteed the Hillbilly a 10,000 point bonus. Unfortunately for them. Made a small little rescue. Pretended like he was fixing it. Is attempting to juke the barbecue and chili. But it seems that Hillbilly is preoccupied. And here we are. At the back of the level. Fantastic. Uh-oh. Lori getting caught out. Not injured. Able to run around the house. Has to buy her ally enough time using the big call tower loop. How long will she last? There are windows right on the outside. A T, a T shape is what they would call that side. She's got two pallets in here. She could do quite a bit. How long is the loop going to last for? Hillbilly's not having any of this nonsense as she walks around. He's going to prepare for that point blank chainsaw. No goals for the mace. Wants none of your business, Lori. Uh-oh, he's going back around to cut her off. She ran through the pallet, and she's going to attempt to make it for a small tea pallet here. This is an unsafe generator and pallet. And it seems that, oh, poor little Claudette got capped with a point-blank chainsaw. Is it going to hit? Ooh, Billy right into the crates. Uh-oh, Lori making a very brave, bold, but maybe stupid mistake of trusting that that Billy is not going to kill her ass for coming back. Sprint burst to buy herself a little bit more time. But I don't think that's going to get her to the pallet in time. She's running over to the tire pallet. Treads drops the pallet. No stun for her, no thousand points. But the leather Billy slash hill Billy slash all the Billies making their way. Claudette attempting to get back to that generator. Got one more to go. If they lose another person, it's going to be a hatch game. Lori running around the coal tower loop as much as she possibly can. She has to survive all the way to the end. If she doesn't have adrenaline, let's verify this. No adrenaline. She's doomed. Hillbilly just continuing the loop. Knows that his game is under his control even if they get that last generator. But it seems like he stopped. He turned around. He went the long way. Lori getting caught out is going to have to take the smaller slow jump back in. Not sure if she's going to be able to make it. This is going to be a smaller loop for her. Quick vaults in. Still one pallet left she can utilize. Doesn't utilize it. Who knows if Billy goes the other way. Doesn't go it. He's trying to go for the T-shaped mark. He'll Billy right on her tail. Will he land it? He's close. He's close. Oh, he's oh, he's going around. He's going to get her. He's chainsawing the Claudette. This is the Claudette. Just barely Claudette. Caught out using the T-pallet. Now both survivors together. He's going to damage the generator for a bit of progress regression. And additionally gain points. 100 for the generator. 100 for the pallet. While Lori heals right behind the corner. Misses from the sprint burst. And down she goes to the next safe pallet location. Takes the stun, 1,000 points. This team is attempting to get as many points as possible, trying to piss that hillbilly off. It's going great. Fantastic, wonderful. Lori down. Using Unbreakable, hillbilly knows the Claudette's location. There is still hope for them. Fantastic. Using that Unbreakable, she's going to get herself up while hillbilly makes the final chase. Claudette attempting to buy as much time as possible. She's got a loop and a window here. She's got a moderate loop here. Hillbilly went around. Claudette respecting the pallet. Hillbilly went on the inside. Gets a free mace. Lori back on her feet. 
If Claudette does not have Adrenaline, she will be in a little trouble, but she does have Unbreakable. Hillbilly broke off, went to go back, defend that generator. Does Lori get it? Lori misses, Sprint Burst takes her off. Hillbilly controlling the generator location. He will not let them leave. This is his house. Welcome to the grind house. Lori back on it again. Lori doing yield bait tactics, spinning in circles. Claudette fully healed. Lori attempting to be the live bait, making the loop as long as possible. Lori unfortunately has to go around one of the longest loops in the game. No pellet. The killer will secure this kill if he does not hurry. There was a pellet! They never used it! She gets to drop the pellet! Free stun! 1,000 points. It seems that Hillbilly is going to have a lot more problems catching them. Doors open. Final chance. Only one has to leave. Hillbilly has to defend a hatch and two doors. Following scratch marks, making sure the Claudette doesn't open the door. He hears the breathing. He sees the scratch marks. Scratch marks is betraying his vision. He sees the Claudette at the distance. I saw the Claudette at the distance. Did anyone else see the Claudette at the distance? It's interesting to see that when you're the spectator of this game, you will see more. You are not looking where the killer is looking. It may appear on screen, and we might call him blind, but this man heard the distance. Injured Lori caught out for a second time, attempting to loop her around. Gets her. If she has rippers, she gets away one more time. One more pallet to go. Looping it, attempting to get that extra stun. Hillbilly not having any of it continues to chase her. Hopefully going for the hit. She's going to make the jump. She doesn't get it. Claudette is their only hope. She must leave to prevent the 20,000 point bonus. Lori taking the fall. Claudette destroying additional totems for boldness points. She'll have five minutes after she breaks that to figure if she's going to leave or stay. Hillbilly coming back. Claudette running out. The only survivor of this game. Still gets chainsawed out the door. Take that, Claudette. Welcome to the underside of the world. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Let's calculate these points and see who the winner is. Just so you know, scores are calculated off of survivor total score with all four survivors, minus the killer score, and then an additional bonus based on how many survived or died. With that being said, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, there were prior tournaments to this one. If you want to watch those videos, there will be soon new videos for the rest of the top eight of the tournament that were a part of Peeps Buying Daylight. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when these videos come up. And as always, good game.